Well, 2023 has started in markedly different fashion for Nagoya Grampus and Gamba Osaka. For today's hosts, just one defeat in their opening 11 league matches has got the locals dreaming of a first title for some 13 years. But for the visitors this evening, things could not have gone that much worse. Only one J-League win so far this season means a long fight to avoid relegation could be on the cards unless things improve. Welcome along to the Toyota Stadium just southeast of Nagoya City Centre for a clash between two of the original members of the J-League, contrasting fortunes over the course of the first two months of the new campaign means the pair are split by some 14 points and 14 places. For Kenta Hasegawa's side, this is an opportunity to draw level with league leaders Vissel Kobe. A win tonight for Grampus will see them jump to 23 points this term, with the current table toppers not playing until tomorrow. The pair, in fact, went head-to-head -head last weekend, with Grampus showing plenty of resilience to come from two goals down to steal a draw, courtesy of a 98th-minute leveller. And most metrics suggested they deserved something from the game. And having picked up points against both of the top two in the league in their last two outings, today's assignment is certainly a little easier, on paper at least, against a misfiring Gamba Osaka side. Danny Poyata's men have struggled so far this season with the Spaniard perhaps still to drill his game plan into the squad after taking over at the start of 2023. Just three successes all told across two competitions in 15 matches played is not what the hierarchy would have expected after hiring the former Tokushima Vortis coach. He will hope that his side can call upon the recent muscle memory of back-to-back -back wins over Grampus just last season when Gamba Osaka did the double over their host today. Although there is no doubt that their confidence took a blow last time out when losing 2-1 at home to city rival Cerezzo in the 69th renewal of the Osaka derby, a rivalry that stretches back to 1982 and means so much to the fans of the Nerazzurri. Fascinating clash of style awaits us tonight then in Nagoya Grampus, a counter-attacking side, one that has the lowest average possession in the J-League this term, but seeing little of the ball hasn't stopped them being chillingly effective in front of goal, while well, Gamba Osaka are a team that tend to dominate possession, their average, the second most in the top flight, in fact, but for all of their time on the ball, they have not made the most of it, and their haul of just one league win so far this season suggests Gamba's tactics have been far from successful. Well, this is the 63rd J-League clash between Nagoya Grampus and Gamba Osaka, two teams that have enjoyed plenty of domestic success over the years, but haven't quite managed a sustained title bid in recent seasons. For Grampus, a positive start to the year has been encouraging. For Gamba Osaka, a significant upswing in form is a must. We're at the Toyota Stadium this evening as Nagoya Grampus take on Gamba Osaka. It's third versus 17th in the Japanese top division. A game that sees Kenta Hasagawa's side as heavy favourites to pick up the three points. Grampus are unbeaten in 12 matches across all competitions with seven wins in that sequence but they have drawn their last three, although it's worth pointing out that two of those draws came versus the only two teams above them in the standings. Gamba Osaka are certainly struggling, there is no doubt about that. They've lost four of their last five matches, haven't won any of their last five. They've only claimed one league win so far this season. That's a 2-0 home success over Kawasaki Frontali last month. They have picked up wins in the League Cup this term, but really their league form must improve if they are to pull away from the relegation zone. They are in the bottom two at the moment, remember, to go down. And, of course, third from bottom is involved in that playoff to stay in the top flight or, indeed, go up, depending if you're the J2 side or, indeed, the top flight team. It all depends, of course, at the end of the season if you are to be in that. I'm sure from a Gambro Osaka point of view, they will be desperate to make sure that they are not battling to avoid the drop. They've been good in certain areas of their game so far this season, but not quite good enough to pick up more than just that solitary 
success. Well, let's check out the teams. Kasper Juncker has missed training this week and he's only named as a substitute tonight. The Dane can boast five goals this season. He's replaced by Norayoshi Sakai, who starts for just the second time in the league this term. But he has netted four times in the League Cup in 2023. There's also recalls for Yuichi Marayama and Ryuji Izumi, while Kazuki Nagasawa starts a top-flight fixture for the first time this year. It's 3-4-3, as you can see, with Brazilian attacker Mateus on the right of the home side's front trio. Our referee is Yudai Yamamoto. It's his first time standing in a game for either side this term. He did take charge of this fixture back in 2020, a 2-2 draw that saw Kazuma Watanabe net a last-minute equaliser for Gamba Osaka. The boys in the booth are standing by, if and when. Let's hope there are no controversial incidents involving VAR. Well, Kosai Tani makes his 100th J-League appearance tonight. The January signing from Shannon Belmare has never finished on the winning side against Grampus in six previous appearances. Shota Fukuoka and Hideki Ishigi return today, the latter after recovering from illness. Genta Miura and Takashi Osami drop to the bench. It is 4-3-3 for the visitors this evening with the Tunisian international Issam Jabali, who played all of his country's three games at the World Cup finals in Qatar, expected to operate through the middle. Big game for both teams then for very different reasons. Nagoya Grampus aiming to keep pace with the teams at the top. And after battling draws in each of their last three J-League games, a win would be a huge boost if they are to maintain a title challenge for Gamba Osaka. The threat of dropping out of the top flight for the first time since 2012 could be a very real one unless they start to pick up points. Historically, success here is not out of the question, but current numbers suggest they will have to shake off some seriously poor form to claim just a second league win of 2023 this evening. Get set for a start then. It is Nagoya Grampus versus Gamba Osaka live from the Toyota Stadium. Underway, it'd be fascinating to see how Grampus go about their business. We reference in the build-up. They are a team that like to play on the counter-attack. They like to try and pick off their opponents. Not really a team that look to go for the jugular straight from the get-go, although they had to do that in their game against, against Davis Kobe last time out. They were 2-0 down and certainly played on the front foot from there on in, grabbing two goals in the last 17 minutes to pick up a point. A crucial one as well, if they are to challenge four top honours in their last two games against the two sides that are above them in the standings. That 2-2 draw at home against Vissel Kobe off the back of a 1-1 away draw against uh, Yokohama F. Marinos. Prior to that, they were held at home by Shannon Belmare. So they've drawn uh, their last two. And indeed, if you stretch it further back, their last three, having drawn in the League Cup as well here. But they are proving very difficult to beat at the moment with that run of 12 without a loss across the two competitions so far. Going really well, incidentally, in the League Cup. They've won four from four. Their last against Yokohama FC, a 2-0 away success, and they are on course to qualify for the knockout stages of that particular domestic knockout competition. Of course, the Emperor's Cup starts a little bit later on uh, this season. Competition that, of course, Nagoya Grampus uh, 8 enjoyed success in. Interesting one as well for Kenta Hasegawa. He was a coach, of course, of Gamba Osaka previously, so it takes charge of this Nagoya Grampa side against the team that he did so well with. And the pressure is just building a little bit, you sense, on Danny Payatus. He was in charge of Tokushima Vortis for a couple of seasons, but moved to Gamba Osaka, and certainly the expectation is more, they demand more, certainly not quite gone to plan so far. As we mentioned as well in the preamble, the are side that like to dominate possession. Not quite seen that in the opening two minutes just yet, but a very small sample size of play as the game hasn't really settled down. Could be a tale of Brazilians as well, coming in for both sides. Mateus, we saw a brief glimpse off. That is Juan Alano, who's got a couple of goals so far this season for Gamba Osaka. Obviously, the likes of Dawan Fran as well. Another Brazilian who started his career at Corinthians, aiming to make his presence felt. Three goals from midfield 
more often than not for Gamba this campaign. He is their top goal scorer, along with Wasami, who drops to the bench today. Uh, incidentally, interesting to see him being left out of the starting lineup. Free kick then to Gamba, curled towards the edge of the penalty area and into the side netting. Not quite sure who got the final touch on that. You can see that the Gamba Osaka players are suggesting that should be a corner. I don't think they're going to get their wish. Did seem to flick up off uh, Nagoya Grampa's boot or shin. Dangerous ball in towards that near post. Difficult to see from that angle, wasn't it? Mitchell Langerak throwing himself across to the left-hand side, not required on that occasion, the Australian. The former international hasn't turned out for the Australian national side for some six years now. Jabali won't get to that, and it's forced long to this near side. Good running off the ball from uh, Mateus. It's been interesting to see how he plays as well, because you mentioned they're a side that like to play on the break, but the fact that Kintsuki Nagai is not playing in this fixture, he's only on the bench and dropped for the first time, three goals this season. Obviously, Kasper Juncker not available as well, so we might see them play a slightly different style. Those two key to the way that they have been playing over the course of the campaign, they can hold it up well. Good combination play between the two, but Nagai only on the bench for this one. And Juncker likewise, Juncker picked up a knock, hasn't trained fully over the course of this fixture. The build up to this fixture. Long punt forward then to this near side. This is Morishita, he's done well getting forward from that wing back position. him play on the left-hand side as well because we've seen him play on the right this campaign so interesting how Kenta Hasagara's gone about setting his team up here just something a little bit different this is Mariama and it's with Manishita again who can't quite steer that one down the line he's uh, picked up a couple of uh, assists and also a couple of goals this season so four goal involvements for Royoya Morishita, defeated in every single game so far this season. Nakatani helped out by his keeper, Langrak. Gamba won home and away last season, a 3-1 home success and a 2-0 win here. Patrick with the early goal and Suzuki with uh, a late strike. Shashi Suzuki on the bench for... Uh, Gamba, incidentally, Patrick, of course, no longer with the club. Here is Mateus. Scored against uh, Kawasaki Frontali in the 2-1 away success last month, did uh, Mateus. Two goals previously against Gamba Osaka in uh, his career, the last of which came in the 2-2 draw here back in July 2020. Last time that we saw a draw between the two. No draws in the last five between the pair. Gamble winning home and away last season, as we mentioned. Grampus winning home and away in 2021, including a 2-0 win here. Yamasaki and Soma on the score sheet, then either side of half-time. Free kick here for Nagoya Grampus. Killed towards that near post again. Well, he saw it nearly work at the other end, trying to embarrass Kosetani. To the side after not playing in the first two games of the season. Masaki Higashiguchi did start the opening couple of thing, uh, fixtures, didn't pick up any clean sheets and was uh, struggling a little bit. And Kosetani, who was signed from Shanam Balmali, coming in. Only the one clean sheet so far for the uh, Japanese international, made his debut against Korea last summer. Seasons with uh, Shonan Belmare coming back to Gamba Osaka and maybe further work for him here. Mateus once again to take this.
Plenty of red shirts back post at the moment. Seven minutes in. Free kicks have been dangerous so far for both sides. Mateus to drill this one in. Fairly flat trajectory, and the header is wide. That was Noriyoshi Sakai. A little bit of pressure on Sakai potentially in this game. He is only starting a J-League fixture for the uh, second time this season. He's been used as a substitute in each of the other games. So always gets minutes on the pitch, but this just a second start. With Nagai relegated to the bench and Yunka perhaps not 100% fit, but he has scored four goals in the League Cup this term. The last two in a 3-2 home win against uh, Yokohama. Last league goal coming last season against FC Tokyo back in October. 2-1 home success, only scored two goals last season. The tennis is down here. Osaka just one point, one place above Yokohama FC, who are in bottom spot in the J League this season. They're three points behind Kashiwa Reisol in the playoff spot and fourth from Sakantosu. Have scored more goals than any of the other teams in the bottom four, but only Yokohama FC have conceded more. Grampus coming forward again, they'll win a corner. Goals scored for Grampus so far this season, two of which have come from flag kicks. Let's see what they can conjure here. Izumi has missed games because of injury this season to take responsibility. Three around the penalty spot, they break away. It's gone to the near post, it's nudged up into the air. Jabali, third time around, might be able to clear. Then it's crashed towards goal by Mateus and curled back in. Cleverly done by Morishita. And you can see he took it on his right side. It's intriguing to see him play as the left wing back with Uchida on the other side. Nakatani. And now Mariyama. Mateus to flick it on. Space on the right-hand side for Uchida. Just behind Mateus, that's a little unlucky. Cleared away. Yoshino unable to make progress and... Rampus trying to win it back out. The pitch has gone all the way back to... Kasetani. Tani to clear. Uchida. Inagaki. Morishita to control. Always wants to play it with his right, doesn't he? It's a clever ball in field, though, here. Well, the shot was always going wide from Izumi. Good movement involving Izumi and Sakai had also taken up a good position here. Just look at the movement between the front players of Nagoya Grampus. Floated towards Morishita. He's always going to want to come inside on his right foot. Plays it for Izumi. Snatched at that just a little. He's yet to score so far this season since moving from Kashima Antlers. Just the one goal last term. That against Vissel Kobe in a 1-1 home draw. Never the most prolific of scorers for his former club back at Nagoya Grand Passé he started 10 goals in 123 games ahead of this one got a really good record against Gambra Saka in his career he's only been on the losing side once in 13 previous appearances against the nine wins in those stats he will expect to pick up another three points for his team it's going to bounce through towards 
Kusetani. Gambro haven't managed a clean sheet in their last five, and only two in 15 across the competitions this season. Stark contrast to how they finished 2022. Completed the J-League term with four consecutive clean sheets, but only managed two shutouts so far this season in 15 matches in League Cup and League play. Just a bit of pressure on that Nagoya Grampus goal for the first time. Ishigi. This is Kwan. And the calling for it, the flick is clever. Jalaba will play it back. Touch from Dawan. This is Lavi. Dawan Fran again. And call to that left side. Clever ball from Machino. Here is Machino once more. Looks busy player on the ball. Walker forward. First time we've seen Gambra Osaka just enjoy a little bit of possession in that middle third. That's asking plenty of Rico Handa. The ball's just going to bounce out. He has got a bit of pace. Sign from Montidio Yamagata ahead of this season. Played in the second tier last term. First campaign in the J League. Still getting used to it a little bit, maybe Ruku Handa. The Right back for Gamba Osaka. Here is Sakai. And was he fouled after the ball had gone? Play continues. This is Jabali. Tries to flick it through for Ishigi. Just a bit scrappy in that middle third, but that might suit Gamba Osaka. That is Dawan Fran, former Corinthians uh, youngster. Three goals this season, including in that derby defeat to Serezzo last time out. So netting in the League Cup win against Kyoto Sanga. 3-1 away success. It's their only away win so far this season. It didn't come in the league play. They've won one from seven, five defeats. The draw coming against Kashiba Sol on match day one, a 2-2 draw. They haven't scored in their last two. And in fact, three of their last six. Goals hard to come by. Shibali, the man has been brought in to try and change that. Some from Danish football, there he is, tries to flick it on, but runs into Nakatani. And the captain does well. This is Mateus, rides one challenge, stays on his feet, thought the referee might intervene. Eventually, the ball goes out of play for a Nogoya Grampus throw. Sakai looks to flick it on. Right into the air by Kwan. Korean international who was sent off against Kyoto Sanga back in April in the 2-1 away defeat. And he plays well. Kimbra Saka tends to play well. Also, Korean international played in the uh, World Cup finals. 30 caps for his country now. Once a Chungbuk. Also played in China with Kun Jan. Twist and a turn from Ishigi. Looks to pull the trigger and does. Well, Mitchell Langrak didn't make a move for that, and I'm not 100% certain he knew where that was going. Switch of play was excellent. We've mentioned Riataro Machino before. Took that down perfectly. Came inside, then out, then back in. Fast feet and a good hit, and it wasn't that far away. The goal has come in the League Cup this season against Reto Osaka. In the 90th minute, it was a 1-1 home draw. Late equaliser back in March. Last league goal coming late last term in October against Julia Owata. Once on the books of Manchester City. But it didn't make the grade at the English champions and was loaned out to Hearts in Scotland. Also played in Portugal with Rio Ave and Estoril, but obviously has got talent. Back to Gambra in the summer of last year, a Japanese under-23 international. He's got some ability. We've seen that already. One to watch, potentially. Yataro Machino. Well, 17 minutes in here, and I would suspect that Gambra Osaka are the happier of the two teams, and Danny Poyates, the more pleased with the two coaches. Well, that's a nasty challenge, isn't it? Get the 
ball, takes the man down. No on front. Back up on his feet, doesn't complain. Better from Gambra Saka, certainly. Jabali's layoff. Hand up. Towards Jabali. Cleared away. This is Sakai. Has to stretch. Can't really do anything with it. Kwon will play it back. Only under a little pressure. Fukuoka. And now Netalavi. How he performs will be key. The Israeli international did play in the European qualifiers. Back in March, 14 caps for his country now, signed from Maccabi Haifa, did play in the Champions League in the 22-23 European season. Got a lot of ability, tempo player just in front of the back four. Back from Fukuoka, and now Kosetani to punt it long. I've got that ability to go long to try and find Issam Jabali. This is Dawan, who's been penalised for his challenge. Nagasawa, heavy touch, Jabali makes it awkward for him. Fuji. Scored that late level up against Vissel Kobe into the eighth minute of added on time. Popped up to grab his first goal of the season. 22 year old centre half. Morishita. Plenty of red shirts in and around the Gambarasaka penalty area here. Momentum of the move just lost a little. Play back by Inagaki. And now it's with Nakatani. Nakatani is used once again. Marayama, good pressing from Gambarasaka. You can see the percentage stats, something we talked about ahead of kickoff. 51% Gambarasaka, 49% Nagoya Grampus. Not quite seasonal averages for either. Uh, Gamba averaging over 57%. Nagoya Grampus under 42. It's the lowest figure in the J League. On a side that is content to play on the break. Went fairly highly. In a number of the more attacking metrics, though, they are fourth for shots on target and third for shot on target percentage, so they are fairly clinical in advanced areas. Because they do like to play on the break. They've been caught offside 31 times this season. It's the second most. They don't necessarily look to play through the lines as they are trying to do here. This is Morishita. He has played left wing back this season, but... Right-footed player, always feel he's better suited on the other flank. Jabali lets it run, can't quite collect the second pass. Someone from Obi, the Danish side, after four goals this season and 27 in 87 appearances in four years. Previously, it's Al Huada and also Rosenberg and Elsborg. Just needs that support, really. Very much the target man with Machino left and uh, Juan Alano, who we've not seen too much of. On the right hand side, you can see number 47 in a bit of space. Machino will push it forwards here, though, and it's towards Shabali. Really good interception, it's cleared away by Mariyama. Gambrasaka just growing in confidence, perhaps. Fukuoka, 
Back for Kwan. Kurakawa, the left back. The first ever goal coming against uh, Nagoya Grampus, incidentally. In a 2 0 home success. A 3 1 home success, I should say, back in April of last year. Grampus looked to clear. Eventually, they do manage to knock the ball out of play for a Canberra Saka throw. Light rain, blustery conditions earlier today. Good crowding, as always, at the Toyota Stadium. Averaging uh, more than any other side in the J League when it comes to their. Attendance this season, Nagoya Grampus, just over 27,000. I suspect there's more in here. There was 40,000 or so for the game against Vissel Kobe, and the away fans have come in numbers as well. Gambar Osaka, those in black and blue, filling the visiting section. More and more of the supporters are reaching for a cape at the moment to just shelter from the rain that's suddenly come. 24 minutes in, no goals so far. Just the last four on their travels, uh, Gamber Osaka. The last 4-0 uh, drumming at the hands of uh, Kashima Antlers. They've lost five of six. And they win against Kyoto Sanger in the League Cup. Managed a clean sheet in seven. Away from home. Struggled on their travels last season as well. They lost seven on the spin, May through August last term. Actually finishing 15th in the top division. Only one point above the relegation zone. Desperate to turn that around here. Some defensive work to do, though. This is Mateus to curl in, and it's towards the back post, but just unable to aim that towards goal. It was a high-dropping ball. Not the easiest, certainly, for Noriyoshi Sakai to try and divert into the net. Always stretching for that one. Never scored against uh, Gambaro Saka. Yoshi Sakai. A little bit better from the home team. This is Dawan Fran. Jabali was on the move. Mateus has it now. Looks to let fly immediately. Spins away for a corner. Four goals from outside of the penalty area, incidentally, this season for Nagoya Grampus. Only Alberts have managed more, six their number, so they do tend to let fly from distance and take their chances with long ranges. Mateus to take the corner for Nagoya Grampus. Referee just reminding players of their responsibilities here. Bit of pushing and shoving in the area. Mateus to take the corner. Out swing a fair delivery, and it's wide by Nakatani. Well, he has scored this season in the 2 2 home draw against Shonan Belmari last month and two last term as well. Sixth season at the club, six in 166 for his team in league play, having moved from Kashiwa Reisol back in 2018. Never scored against Gambara Saka, but he scored two own goals. So scored for them rather than against them. However, when he has put through his own goal against Gambara Saka, his team has still managed to win both games. It's a happy coincidence, but one I'm sure he would rather not repeat. He made his professional debut against Gambara Saka for Kashiwa Reisol back in October 2014. Ever present so far this season for Nagoya. He's got some defensive work to do at the moment. Back to the day job after missing that header a few moments ago. Fukuoka. Forward by Kwan. One back. This is Sakai. Layoff towards Izumi. He's robbed of possession. This is Machino. Kwan again. Fukuoka calling for it. It's Neta Lavi. Dropped a little bit, likewise Isam Jebali. 
Gamborosaka's turn to just enjoy a spell of possession then here as we approach the half-hour mark. Half chances, quarter chances so far maybe for both teams, but no goals. Six of uh, Grampus, uh, eight goals at home this season have been in the second half. They've been a team that have generally come on strong after the interval, and they haven't scored in the opening 40 minutes at home this season, so I guess that's nothing new. These uh, supporters in red and yellow have had to be patient. Percentage possession just flipped the other way, but only just one point in it. Here is shot of Fukuoka. He's still to the starting line and for just a second start this uh, season for his club. Player who uh, Danny Piantas worked with at Tokushima Vortis. And Fran will play it back. Fukuoka has it again. Nagoya just dropping a little deep. Ishino will play it over to the left hand side. This is Kurakawa to come forward. Low ball in. Dealt with well. And now Izumi needs an out ball. Mateus scampers to get to that. Reaches it. But Netalavi will pounce to win it back, the loose ball just about in the reach of the Israeli. Jabali, Kurokawa, here is Netalavi again. Oh, he's just slowed down a little bit, that's been a criticism certainly of Gabriel Osaka this season. Have been a little unlucky as well though, their expected goals metrics don't quite tell the story of what's happened, which means that surely there will be some regression at some stage. They've got an expected goals figure of 16.9. They've only scored 12. And perhaps more tellingly, an expected goals against figure of 13.9, but they've conceded 24. Now, at some stage, that's got to regress, and there's got to be some fairer numbers for them. Get a little lucky against a high-flying Nagoya Grampus side today. Machine is really impressed so far. Fast footwork of the 24-year-old, but can't find a teammate. It'll spin back to that near side. Juan Alano tries to take it on. Riku Hando was in a lot of space on the right, but the referee has intervened nonetheless. Marayama, back for Mitchell Langre. Langre towards Morishita. Sakai will flick it on, doesn't quite get the angle for Mateus. That would have been a good flick as well, would have been three on two. As it is, Kwon will lay it back towards Kosetani. Centurion in the J-League, of course, today, as we mentioned. To his solitary clean sheet so far, his uh, save percentage is very low in the J League, 53.7. Contrast that to Mitchell Langerak's 81.1. He's had a stellar season so far with five clean sheets from the 11 games that he's played, and ever present as well for Nagoya Grampus. Mr. Kobe, incidentally, have managed more clean sheets so far this season. Long towards Sakai, might be able to get to this. Cosetani is there, rolls it out immediately. Juan Alano will lay it off. Flicked on by Riku Handa. It's a free kick and it could be a yellow card as well here, first of the game. Yuda Yamamoto issuing the caution to Dawan Fran, who is not particularly happy that he's been cautioned. There's the incident. Frustrating so far for the Brazilian who goes into the book. Man 
Keita, along with Juan Alano this season. A couple of assists, the pair of them, but um, going his way with three goals as well. Five goal involvements, the most for a Gambara Saka player so far this season. Frontali back on the 9th of April. League Cup successes against Kyoto Sanga and FC Tokyo. Only enjoying their last aid. It is all or nothing at the moment, and it's usually nothing. Failed to score in two of their last four. They haven't scored more than one in any of the last five. Nakatani, Mariyama, Nishita is coming short, but this is Sakai to race forwards, and Izumi's inside the penalty area, the ball should have been better, still might work out, flash wide by Takuya Ochida. Flag is up anyway, I'm presuming for Izumi, let's have another look at this, or was it Sakai? Saka may be just. Izumi was free, but the position from where Gambara Saka are taking this free kick would lead me to believe that it was Saka who made the move a split second too soon. Kurokawa. And he's Kwon. Lavi. Awkward from Elano, who's just run into the defender there. That's a free kick. He's been injured in the process. Just holding a rib, I think, here. Sent off against uh, Nagoya Grampus a couple of seasons ago for Kashima Antlers in a 2-0 home loss. Danny Poyota is just trying to get the instruction there to Dawan Franny. It's going to take a little bit of time for the new coach to get his thought process and game plans across to his players. He came to Japan with glowing references, really. He coached youth teams at uh, Espanyol and also Real Madrid. He was with uh, Yuri Cruyff at Maccabi Tel Aviv. Very short stint at Panathinaikos that didn't work out in Greek football, but did okay with Tokushima Vortis and still a young coach. Some good ideas, and they try to play the game the right way with a lot of possession. Lip injury, not too serious by the looks of things here for Juan Alano. Slow, but when both teams up it, there is a sense that chances will be created. Akasawa will play back. Uchida on the move again to inside the penalty area. Morishita's hit over the crossbar. Favourably on his right side, couldn't keep it down. goals in the league this season one in the league cup as well this should have been another it's driven to him from fellow wing back Uchida one to the one side to the other and you look at this I'm not saying it's an easy chance but that close in I think you've got to hit the target it was sweetly struck but always going over down the captain never present this season and the mainstay since signings from uh, San Fredchi Hiroshima and the 2020 campaign Izumi Nagasawa 
Zumi wants it back. It is Inagaki. And now Nakatani. Mateus tries to turn his man, was brought down. Referee lets it go, does he? Does. Shabali. Ishiga. Juanalano. Caught by uh, Uchida. Oh, now then there was a an elbow that was thrown at Morishita. It's only a card, but VAR will take another look at this. There was a coming together between the pair and then some significant afters from the Brazilian. And one or two of the Nagoya Grampus players are suggesting an elbow was thrown here. And certainly something that I saw. That's the first coming together. Oh, we've not caught it up on our cameras for that one. But there's certainly something off the ball. This might tell us. That's the foul from Uchida. And then potentially he's taking it out on the wrong wing back. There's one shove. No, it's not necessarily an elbow, is it? But there's a flailing finger. Gets a yellow and no more. Probably right. Probably. <laughs> Nakatani. Fuji. He loses out to Ishigi. Inakaki. Long towards Sakai. It hasn't quite paid off yet. Free kick Gamba. We know that Paul Grampus haven't managed a clean sheet in their last uh, three, incidentally. Only two in their last nine after five in the first six games this season. Two many draws at the moment, just blunted their title challenge a little. Three for the last five. Mateus can't make it stick from Manayama's ball and it spins out for a goal kick. Five minutes to go until half time, then here. of tactics to a certain extent for Nagoya Grampus. We've not seen their usual counter-attacking style. They've had to maybe just tweak what they usually do, given the fact that Junker's only on the bench and Nagai likewise only a sub. I didn't know that Junker was struggling, but not Nagai. I wonder if that's a situation that's because of an injury or something else if it's not I'm sure we'll see one probably both of them in the second half is if it stays as it is given the fact that they've got uh, eight goals between them in the J League this season Kwan will play it back this is for Kuoka Gawan arms went up but the ball didn't completely cross the line for Kuoka again a bit of width here, looked at the left, goes to the right. Here is Juan Alano, Jabali with the arm up, edge of the penalty area. The run is ignored. It's a little frustrated. Dawan. Kwan. Fukuoka. Dawan again, compressing here from Nagoya. This is what they're good at. Chasing this one down, making it difficult for Kosetani. Trying to play through the press, nearly managed to do it. Jabali now has to do the running around himself. Forward by Inagaki, clever as well. Morishita, this is Mateus, look for the first time ball. There was plenty of Gamba Osaka players back there. Mateus will leave it. To get more red shirts towards that penalty area. Plenty arriving now. Morishita into throw.
Morashita. Goal towards the far post and Uchida. That's a corner, I think. Some loan last season from FC Tokyo. Takuyo Uchida signed permanently ahead of this season. Only the one professional goal. Coming against Kawasaki Frontale. Difficult chance. Osaka have conceded five headed goals this season. It's the joint most in the league. So are susceptible from situations like this. Position corners and the like. Mateus takes it short. Izumi. Mateus will whip it inside netting. Low. Lots of players tied to that near post. It was always going to be lucky to find its way through, but I guess he could have taken a deflection in the end. Setani saw it. Knew that it was always curling into the side netting. No joy for Mateus, but he's the most likely to create something for Nagoya Grampus in the opening 45. I just wonder if Kenta Asagawa will change things at the break or will he leave it 15 minutes or so into the second half? Final minute of the opening 45. Supporters still going strong. Nagoya Grampus fans making plenty of noise behind the goal. Away to our left as Kosetani punts it long for Gamba Osaka. Towering header back from Marayama. Oh, that's Analano again. Now then, he's only just picked up a booking. Well, if I was Danny Payatas, I would suggest he's got to watch himself and he might be best to take him off. He's going to fly into challenges like that, whether he makes contact or not. yellow cards ahead of this uh, fixture for Gambler Osaka. They picked up another two here. And the player sent off. There's the player that has been sent off. Quan. Uh, Red carded against Kyoto Sanga. Two minutes have added on time at the end of the 45. Here feels about right. Not too many stoppages. One or two injury issues and free kicks that have had to be dealt with. He's getting a little niggly isn't it between these two sides there's been one or two challenges that the referee has had to pull up and remind everyone of their responsibilities free kick for Gamba and it's the visiting fans making a bit of noise trying to inspire their team up goes the signal plenty forward in white here for Gamba towards the far post towards Quan. Dawan to try and aim that one back inside the six-yard box. Mitchell Langra, really been tested so far. Darwin with the header back. Mariyama with the header. Mateus is quick, but he won't get to that. Safety first approach, though, from Kurakawa. One last chance maybe here for Nagoya Grampus to get their noses in front before half-time. Mateus just about stays on his feet. Now that's the wrong way. Nagaki didn't realise there was no-one running off him on the right wing, but there was options in field. Two minutes have added on time up, and that is the half. Well, half chances at best, I think, for both seats by and large. That one has been busy, but he hasn't really been effective. And we've not seen the best of Ryoji Izumi just yet for Nagoya Grampus. Their two wing-backs have done well. Kosei making his 100th J-League appearance hasn't been overly tested. Likewise, Mitchell Langrat, the chances ha that have come have been spurned. Juan Alano has put himself about. He'll have to behave in the second half if he's to stay on the pitch for me. But I would imagine that Danny Poyotas is the happier of the two coaches here because Kenta Hasagawa hasn't really seen his team create too much by that chance that flew over the bar from Morishita. Thomas even then at the break. Half-time here is Nagoya Grampus nil, Gambaro Saka nil.
Welcome back, get set for the second half of the Toyota Stadium. We've got a Grampus fans expecting the, their team would get the better of Gamba Osaka, given the form between the two. Those fans know that their side are in the bottom two of the relegation places. Gamba with just the one win so far this season. The Grampus know that success here would see them rise to the top of the standings in terms of equal with points with Vissel Kobe, although Still, Kobe's goal difference is much better. We've had a switch for Nagoya Grampus ahead of this second half, incidentally. Kensuki Nagai is on, and Takuya Uchida has gone off. Now, that will almost certainly mean a change of formation for Nagoya Grampus. Nagai is a striker, Uchida is a wing back. I suspect that uh, Ryoya Morishita will revert to right back. He's a, a, a right footed player. We'll see exactly how Nagoya Grandpa will line up. Uh, Nagoya Grampus will line up when the second half gets underway. Danny Payotas, probably the happier of the two coaches. Kenta Hasagawa, who won so much with uh, Gamba Osaka, of course, but now in charge of Nagoya Grampus, hoping for a little bit better from his side in the second half. I suspect that Gamba Osaka might take a point. Underway then for the second half then here at the Toyota Stadium. It's Nagoya, Grampus nil, Gamba Osaka nil after 45 minutes here, Gamba Osaka. Didn't create as many chances as Nagoya, Grampus say, but I suspect that a point would be seen as a positive from Danny Poyatos, given their lowly league position. There is the change for Nagoya, Grampus with Kensuke Nagai, who's got three goals in the J-League this season, plus two in the League Cup, five in all competitions, therefore, and he's got a great record, incidentally, against Gamba Osaka as well. Seven goals he scored against them. More goals against Gamba Osaka than any other side that he's faced. The last two in a 3-1 home success for FC Tokyo back in July 2019. So the goals have dried up a little against Gamba, but historically, the team in white, or a team that he does enjoy scoring against. We'll see if he can collect an eighth or more over the course of the second 45 minutes here. There is the substitute, and this is Sakai now inside the area, who blasts wide, it was a tight angle, yes, the whistle had gone, I think maybe he was offside. But nonetheless, his finish has got to be better than that, he went for power rather than precision. He's offside there, it's a clever flick from Sho Inagaki, it's a poor finish, all the power, put the laces through it, but did not find the target, it would not have mattered anyway. And it does appear as if we're going to see Sakai Nagai as a two. And Morishita certainly come to the uh, right-hand side, so he's going to play right back. And potentially a switch at left back here, well there will be a switch at left back, maybe Mariyama will work that out shortly, this is Azumi, and that's uh, Fukuoka who's gone down, See a more direct Nagoya Grampus in the second half. That's what he's got to worry about. The Kamada Saka coach, Danny Poyatos. Kosei Tane 
goes long. Jabali underneath this one. Flick towards the skipper in Akaki. One back. that sees Gamera Saka come out with possession. Ishiki might be able to pull the trigger here. It's a tight angle, it's a good block. Fuji coming across to deny Hideki Ishigi. Fell to him really kindly. Corner. Osaka with the first opportunity to try and hurt Nagoya Gam uh, Grampus here. She takes it short. Mishino got underneath that one. Shows some neat touches in the first half, then he faded a little bit. Had a bit of space to take that one on, but nowhere near the target. Towards that left hand side, but potentially still playing a back three. With Azumi almost the, uh, the left wing back, might fall to him over on that left hand side. Flip back by Juan Alano. Now it's with Fukuoka. Dangerous ball, but no one will make it work. It's a little short as well. Thump forward by Kwong Kyung Won. It is Mariyama. To saying he's playing as uh, a regular left back. He's certainly in that position at the moment. Marayama. Morishita keeps it in play. No, he doesn't. I think this is better for him. I know he's played both positions this season, but just naturally right-footed. Inagaki over the head of Sakai. You can see that... Nagai's going to chase it down. He's hard working. He's 34 now. He's been around an awful lot. From Japanese international. Last of his 12 caps coming three years ago now, four years ago now. Mishino stretches, can't get there. Marayama, Izumi, Nagai on the move on the left-hand side, Sago through the centre, Izumi still has possession, one step over and another looking to take on Handa, Nagai, takes a deflection out for another corner, that was a little more dynamic between the forward players. the corner and it's flicked just over the crossbar with Kusetani in no man's land Sakai unable to keep it down Mateus with the corner deeper this time and his body's crashed to the turf the headed effort was just over the crossbar there was all sorts of pulling and pushing inside the six yard area the penalty box Yoshi Sakai Able to keep his header down. Nagoya Grampus with uh, an away fixture against Kashima Antlers next weekend, and they take on Sanford Hiroshima for back in League Cup action, their fifth game in the competition, looking for a fifth win, of course. Thank you, Ron Vissel Kobe, that'll be a decent cup game. Juan Alano flicks it through towards 
Isan Jabali, but it's easily collected by Mitchell Langrak, who will try and get something going immediately. Mateus with a turn and the move forward. It's a clever run from the Brazilian, but then the touch was a little heavy, and in fact, he got it taken off his toes. Meschino. Navi. Got a cow calling for it. Alano, this is Machino. Nikuhanda. Dawan. Kwan calling for it, but from a promising position, Gambaro Saka have managed to work the ball back inside their own area. Free kick. Urawa Reds in their next game, incidentally, next weekend before a tough home game against Yokohama F Marinos. Not getting any easier for Gamba. Ishiga, Kurakawa, Meshino. Touch lets him down, should be cleared away by Inagaki. Mateus on the move. Lavi. Good running from the defensive midfielder. The Israeli spots the danger, plays it all the way back to Kosetani. She can drop in deep again. We've seen that a little more in this second half. Formation to Espel's midfielder. Kyoto Sanger in the 2 1 away defeat back in April. He's also scored in the League Cup as well, but his starting moves a little deeper all of a sudden. Kurokawa. Fullback tries to find another, but uh, gets too much on it, and Miku Handa can't keep it in play. Well, we've had 10 minutes of this second half, and again, it's been chances from wide areas, from set pieces so far. But still, this fixture remains goalless. Lurking behind as Nagai flicked it forward. Meshino. It's a free kick, might be a card as well here to Ishiga. Which is offered. Not quite sure they were accepted, and the yellow card does come to uh, the midfielder. Third portion of the game for Kamba Osaka. Flicked up. He's late to get to that. Easy caution for the referee to give. Yuda Yamamoto, who's done well so far for me. Morishita. Davai, Meshino, Kurakawa. Morishita wins the throw, takes it quickly. Is there anything on for Nagoya Grampus here? Not quite. Asawa unable to keep the move alive and it's clear once more. Further changes. Well, he's missed his uh, the one big chance he had in this second half. He's worked hard, Noriyoshi Sakai, but only a second start this season. Hasn't brought a goal. And his run has ended here. As we see Kasper Junker come on, and also Yonamoto come on for Nagasawa. Those are the changes here. And it's no real surprise, I would suggest, to see these two come on because they both started the previous game and Yonamoto started all bar two now. And uh, Kasper Junker has featured in every single game and has started 10 or 12. He's got five goals as the top goal scorer. Missed training with uh, an unspecified injury. Rico Handa. To try and thread it through. Wasn't that far away. Had 
had to take it with his weaker left foot. Hasn't scored since moving from Montidio Yamagata ahead of this season. Three goals for his former club, but not in the top flight. And he was allowed to run and run. And as the goal got closer, the option to shoot was on. Just couldn't wrap the left boot around it enough, in truth. It didn't really have the pace, I think, that would have really tested Mitchell Langerat. But he wasn't that far away. Back come Grampus towards Juncker. He's a presence, certainly, in 10 to feet the forward line that's on now for Nagoru. It's the one that uh, Kenta Hasagawa wants to play more often than not. Nunca, Nagai and Mateus with uh, Yonamoto in midfield. And here's Yonamoto straight into the action. Might be straight into the book as well. Change for Gamba Osaka. Can provide the spark here to get that all important first goal. Marco Grampus unbeaten when they've scored the first goal so far this season. Four wins and two draws from the six times that they've nudged in front and grabbed the go ahead goal. Saka, likewise, haven't been beaten when scoring first, just haven't done it that often, only three times, four more than two draws. Meshino. Dawan. Kwon. Ishida. Just catches the arm. And the player to come off. Let's have a look. Machino just faded a little bit. Thought he showed some really good movements, some good touches in the first half, but uh, Rio Tara Machino is off and Rio Takao is on. Mateus battles, Alano does well. This is Kurakawa to break forward. Fullback loses possession. Alano picks it up. Touch from Giovanni. This is Ishiga. Just need to trust themselves a little more, I think, Gamba Osaka, when they start to play the ball a little quicker. They've got some technically gifted players, they can move it through the lines well. Just a bit too slow and ponderous so far, obviously. Their league run has meant that they've played with a bit of caution recently. Just don't want to get beat again, but they hope or not, they've got quality players. One. Oh, with a touch. Was a former player, was a striker. Mainly for Shimizu S. Pulse. Scored some 54 times in 240 appearances for Japan as well. Didn't play in a World Cup final. One with the header. Marishita underneath it. Mateus to turn. Marishita wants it down the line. Oh, gets a bit lucky, but he's got the ball. It's to Wojunka. Well, the way that he spun into his path, I think, was more by luck than good judgment, but it worked out for him, just unable to find a teammate with the centre. Yonamoto's header, this is Izumi. Back for Langarek.
that's awkward rather than anything else for me, but the card has come out and Izumi's going to get booked. He's missed time, but he tries to pull out of it, I think. Have another look at this. No, I guess it's awkward. It's a bit reckless, isn't it? But I don't think he's actually going for his opponent. Izumi yellow carded. Again. Still got a chance here. Against Fuji. So far, the 22 year old defender. Shaping up to be a very good prospect indeed. That was uh, Nakatani who could just uh, hold off Jabari. This is the spot that he comes from. Here. Urgency. Witness from either squad so far, from either team. Quan. Mateus will pick up the loose ball and Junker's with him as well. This is Mateus, it's towards Junker who will have to stretch to get there. Too much on the through ball. Both players a little narrow. Junker willing, just a grimace there as well. He's not long on. Makes the run. That one just too far in front. for Jabari. Might fall here for Alana, who will take it down and still going! Claims he was caught. He's suggesting we need VAR to have a look at that. Well, VAR does look at all the incidents inside the penalty area. Should he have taken it on first time? Second time, he's controlled it well. After the ball had gone, is he caught? Is it a penalty? So, too much contact if there is contact. Run down clutching the shin and then straight back up again, wanting the penalty. Not given. Called in here, but nodded away by Kurokawa. What he sheets his head at. This is Kurokawa again against Mateus. That's always dangerous taking on. We go Grampus is number 10. Milano battles, loses out. It pings for Mateus here. There's plenty of red shirts in this attack. Nagai. Touch has been taken and shot eventually comes across the face of goal, Juncker. And eventually forced in from close range. The captain, Sho Inagaki, could not miss. Gamba Osaka could not clear. And as the ball pinballed around inside the penalty area, it was finally forced home from a couple of yards out. Credit, first of all, Haruya Fuji, who is in the advanced position. Came to him here, the centre-half. Didn't want to pull the trigger, eventually he did. And then Juncker was there. And as Gamba tried to clear, it almost strikes the captain, Ian Agaki, before just spinning up into the back of the net. Let's have another look at this. You can see that I think it's Fukuoka who tries to clear the number two. And as he does, as he just blasted at the Nagoya Grampus skipper, that seems to be the strength of it, although Sho Inagaki is trying to make some sort of forward move as well. We can see it here. Fukuoka clears, hits Inagaki, 
It's a scramble goal. It's not the prettiest, but this lot don't mind because Nagoya Grampus lead Gamba Osaka by a goal to nil. Midway through the second half. Gamba Osaka's resistance broken. And it's... Sho Inagaki, his second goal of the season. That's if it stands, of course. What are we looking at here? Yudai Yamamoto says, wait. Didn't seem to be anything wrong with it. I was trying to work out if there was any sort of offside situation. But I didn't really notice if there was. I couldn't work out from the replays that we saw if that was going to be an issue. I think it's almost certain to be given, but you never know these days. What we are waiting for is a, a triple switch from uh, Gamba Osaka. Takashi Usami is going to come on. Uh, so we're going to see here. That's the first alteration. She gets the player that's uh, coming off. There is uh, Usami. Turns 31. Incidentally today. Of uh, returns for him if he stays as it is. Jabali is coming off. And it's uh, he took Yam Yamamoto is coming off for Dawan. He's been ineffective in this uh, second period. And also Musashi Suzuki, I think, has come on as well here. Saw him just a few moments ago. So three changes. Yamamoto, Suzuki and Osami all on. And players to come on off Dawan Jabali. He's been taken off. Twenty minutes to try and turn this around. Then Gambrosaka, Manalano, and again, and he tries to make the run inside the penalty area. Who gets the final touch? Corner. Takao, right hand side, making his presence felt for the first time since coming on. Shinijabari, Shino, and that one all off of Sami, Yamamoto, Suzuki, Takao, all on. Curling corner to the edge of the area, Navi will take it down, it's an awkward one, always rising, got underneath that one. To score since moving to the J-League. Oh, it's the hard work, isn't it, of the veteran striker Kensuki Naga, and he demands so much from his teammates as well. Started every single game prior to today. I suspect he'll be back on the uh, starting lineup for the next fixture. Flick towards Juncker, cleared away by Kwon. Demands so much of his teammates. That's a great example to everyone. 
34 now. Just two goals shy of the 50 for uh, Nagora Grampus. Third spell with the club. Rashita to curl forward, Juncker to control, he's done well, needs a bit of help, Mateus on the right-hand side might provide it. Plenty back here, Mateus to curl in, Juncker will not get there likewise, Nagai. Krakawa, the guy chasing it down again, and the press and the pressure is good, Izumi, who's playing left wing back at the moment, gets the touch. by Takao, Kouka, this is more like the way we've seen Nagura Grampus play for much of the season now, very much sitting back and looking to counter, here they go again, it's Mateus to throw towards Juncker, but, well what, three times now we've seen that pair break forward, and the pass hasn't quite been there, but if they keep getting chances, you can bet that that combination will work. He might be now. This is Mateus. It is Juncker. Won't be now. There's so much good understanding between the pair. Just opening up a little bit because Nagoya Grampus is sitting back. And just looking to counter. Ball's going to spin away. From uh, Suzuki. Alano. Osami. Kurokawa. Fed back by Kwon. Control from Alano is off. What is she done? And again. Nagai. Towards the idea. Thirty two towards Osama, you might get there. And it's a clever run, but it was well watched. Credit Morishita, the right wing back. Just his presence was enough. Look at the 17, he tracks the run here. Sees the movement of Osami, who looked like he might get in between defenders, but not quite. Fukuoka. Yamamoto. Kwon. Moto again. On the line for Riku Handa. There's been a little bit of a reaction, but not a good enough one just yet. 14 minutes remaining here. Nagoya Grampus lead Gambaro Osaka by goal to nil. And it will be a goal that will see them jump to 23 points in the standings. And level with uh, Vissel Kobe if they can put the scoreline as it is. Here's the goal scorer and he's done really well to break free. This is Inagaki, play on, says the referee after the skipper is shoved to the ground. Now it's with Mateus. Oh, now then he was caught by Suzuki and that one will not be let go. First foul. Usami comes in on another. He gets booked. The free kick is where uh, Suzuki brought Mateus down. I didn't see a yellow card for Musashi Suzuki, and he could have got one. Second 
goal here might rubber stamp the win. Mateus to flick in towards the far post, flicked away by Yamamoto. to come off, he's uh, worked hard, he got uh, his goal, but always dangerous. Switch sees Yuki Nogami come on, regular starter, Sign from San Fredji ahead of this season. So he wants to take the corner for Nagoya Grampus. Shoving inside the six yard box. Juncker is the obvious target here. Nagai as well. Holding towards the far post over the head of Juncker. Flicked back towards the penalty spot. Still not completely away. Threading back for Juncker to curl one. And they would have been coming back from an offside position. This will tell us. Chance for the 77. Sammy was playing him on. Would have counted. Should he have taken a touch? Hand up. Lavi. Usami. Takao. Shooter is now switched to that left hand side again by the looks of things, unless he's coming back to the right flank. I think he is. Not quite yet, though, more defending to do. He's had a really good game. Rico Handa, not too badly, is a wing-back for Kamaru Saka as well. Yamamoto to cross, cleared away by Nakatani. Still not completely away, though. Usami again, threaded through. Suzuki can't quite turn and get the shot away. Back to goal, loses possession. Nagai is on the move. The veteran striker showing pace. Junker to the left-hand side. Nagai to curl towards Junker. Won't make it. Nice idea. Probably needed to release his strike partner just a little earlier. As Kosetani was always going to get to that if it was inside his own penalty area. Ten minutes remaining. And he's been up the pace, certainly. Takai and Rukuhanda on the right flank to combine. here to keep the opposition out. We've seen that for much of the season. Defensively sound, good discipline. Keep their positions. Quite happy to let the opposition have the ball in that middle third. Back themselves to keep anyone out at the moment. Didn't quite work against Vissel Kobe last time out. Conceded too early on and had to change tactic. To scramble a 2 2 draw here. They lead by a goal to nil with eight and a bit minutes remaining. But Osaka have been creating those clear good opportunities. They've had the half chances. Just a little, little, a little reluctant to really get players in advanced positions. Not really seen the best of that man. Juan Alano going off. And Yoroto Yamami is coming on. this season, Hiroto Yamami scored a couple of goals in the league last season. Last anyway was in the Emperor's Cup, 3-1 win over Uita Trinita in June. He's scored in the league for a year. Yamamoto. 
Yamami puts him in a corner. Just 23, in to Yamami. It's gone the difference, fortunate as it might have been. And the guy down when this one was ricocheting around inside the box. No doubt that Fukuoka blasted against him, but he does stick out the right boot. He's trying to, or the left boot, he's trying to sweep it in, isn't he? Hits the right, sweeping with the left. Make it difficult for the opposition to clear in situations like that. You might get your reward. That's exactly what happened. Junker backs in, cleared away by Fukuoka. All a bit awkward here. Free kick for Nagoya Grampus. Their time. There's no hurry up here for uh, Nagoya Grampus. All the players run off, run away from the ball. No one wants to take it. Izumi, who's been very busy and effective over the course of this game, will step up here for Kenta Hasagawa. Back inside the box, cleared away by Takao. Back in by the goal scorer, Inagaki. Mariyama to curl in. Yuka was waiting. There are a breakaway on here. Maniyama trying to race back, as is Haruya Fuji. Fukuoka. And now Kwon. A bit of space for the Korean. Usami. Fukuoka. Taken down first time by Yamami. Kurakawa to curl towards the back post, just a little too high. I would suggest that Riku Handa has probably made his run towards that back post a little too soon. If he'd have just held his ground, he might have been able to run onto that. Saka's last come from behind win was in the uh, Empress Cup against Uita Trinita back in June of last year. Their last in the league against Uita also, but you've got to go back to the summer of 21. <laughs> Yamami. Kurakawa. Fukuoka. Rikuhanda on right hand side, Summer through the uh, centre. One back by Fuji. And now Nagai, and he's got Junker to his left. Here is Junker, and still going. It's a determined run. How was he halted? Illegally. And a car for Fukuoka. Close control here. Never going to be easy. Good touch there comes inside, and that one as well. Tries to get the ball, but he—it's nowhere near it. Oceans are mounting up for Kamba Osaka. Time running out, more importantly for them. Judai Yamamoto just reminding the defensive wall, watch the arms. Hoping that his side can grab that second that will make the final few minutes. Only painless, you would imagine. Just the narrow advantage at the minute, though. Who fancies this one? Maniyama has placed it. But Tanaka also standing over this. 
is it going to be? It is going to be Marayama. Takes a deflection out for a corner. It was hit low. It may well have been curling in. Interesting to see the veteran defender take a free kick in that sort of situation. Keeper was already moving to the right as we were looking, the left as he was moving. Izumi to the near post. Inagaki up and under to keep the move alive and keep the pressure on and keep the ball down the right end of the field as far as they're concerned. Nagai to curl in and collected by Kosetani. Osama. Full towards uh, Suzuki. Still might work for them though here. That's uh, Kohanda. Well, we're into the 90th minute and it's looking like uh, another defeat for Gamba Osaka here. It will be their seventh of the season if they can't get a goal. Gahama FC also with seven reverses so far this season, the most in the top five in Japan, and just that solitary success. They will remain on seven points. They'll be three behind Kashiwa Reisol in that playoff position, and they will be four behind Sagan Tosu. And of course, both Kashiwa Reisol and Sagan Tosu will have games in hand for Sagan Tosu. They'll have two. Both are playing tomorrow means that the gap between Gamba and safety will grow and they might even find themselves bottom of the table depending what Yokohama FC can do but they've got a tough task themselves away at Vissel Kobe tomorrow and of course the Goya Grampus will be hoping that Yokohama FC can do them a favour and take some points off the league leaders goal difference is such as that Grampus will move to uh, second only with a plus eight goal difference. Vissel Kobe plus 15. So it would take a significant defeat to see uh, Nagoya jump to the top, and that's not including what Yokohama F. Marinos will do themselves. They face Kyoto Sanga uh, tomorrow, incidentally. We've had 30 seconds of the added on four minutes here. Still, Nagoya Grampus lead Gamba Osaka by a goal to nil. We've got a player down here, caught in uh, the chest, I think. Just winded, potentially. He's not on the side of those supporters. It's been another disappointing away performance, unless we see something from Yamami. Konakawa. Yamami again, he's been busy on the ball. Gets half a yard, finds some space here. Lavi to turn it back to that right flank. Full waiting for the delivery. Lavi shot, turned over. Langerak, who hasn't had that much to do all game, pulls out a stunning save in the 92nd minute to keep Nagoya Grampus in front. They worked it really well here. Came back to the Israeli. Curling effort, dipping shot. Mitchell Langerak doing well to turn this one over because it was dipping in. In comes the corner, danger still not over. This is Yamami on his right side, looks for the curler. Langerak pushes away again. Over towards Usami, who drills it back inside the box. Suzuki can't get there. Yamami again. Inagaki in the way. Well, now there's a bit of urgency. But there hasn't been the quality to get the level up. And Juncker is away on the left-hand side, if he can keep it in. Tani was completely out of his goal, but it's Davi that wins it back for Gamba Osaka. So close to a leveller at one end, nearly a breakaway second at the other, and the game isn't over just yet. Finally, 
Gamba finding a little bit of fight and purpose, but it's too late, you fancy, with just a minute of the added on four remaining. Yamamoto has gone down, but that was after this incident involving Izumi. And this might be the last chance, the last act. Desperate defending, some terrific goalkeeping, keeping Gamba Osaka out very late on. Usami to launch it high inside the box. Langerat comes and claims that's what you want your keeper to do. Six clean sheet, joint most in the league. If he can keep out Suzuki on Co for the final few seconds, and potentially that is that. See the referee point to his watch when we had a player down a few moments ago, so we might get a few more seconds. We'll see. Flick down towards Suzuki, cleared away by Nakatani. One back, temporarily. Konakawa loses out. Nagai goes forward, brought down. Referee decides to. Give a free kick to Nagoya and produce a yellow card. Had to intervene, didn't he here? All a bit awkward. And got a cower carded. Gonna match in the whole scheme of things here. We've had nearly five minutes of added on time. This could be it. That is full time. Half foot at the end. One goal enough. Show Inagaki, the Nagoya Grampus captain, taking advantage. A scramble goal as Fukuoka looked to clear. He struck the skipper and flew in. Gamba battled hard. They didn't really show the quality. They created chances late on, but it was not enough. Mitchell Langerat with a really good save to deny Neta Lavi very late on. He added on time. Suzuki didn't make too much of a difference. Asami did, and I was wondering why he didn't start the fixture. He might next time around. Disappointment for Gamba Osaka, whose poor run continues without a win in six now. And that's another defeat as well. Seven this season in the J League, but for Nagoya Gramp as well, they can continue to look up because they will draw level of uh, Vissel Kobe at the top of the standings. Tears from one or two of the Gamba Osaka supporters. They've got to turn it around as the season goes on, but it's another defeat here. Nagoya Grampus one, Gamba Osaka nil at the 90. So show in Agaki's goal the difference between the two sides. Disappointment for Kosetani on his 100th appearance in the J League. And for this man, the pressure builds. Danny Poyatos hasn't quite cracked the formula, and these supporters, disappointed, will demand more of their team and their coach. They've travelled in numbers here, but it's going to be a miserable journey back as they look to try and find the right balance, the right inspiration from the squad that they've got to try and turn this season around because it's very much going in the wrong direction. They will remain in the bottom two, and after the end of match week 12, they could be bottom of the table. Haven't been relegated for a decade, but having only just stayed up by a point last season, it's going to be another long battle to avoid to drop your sense unless they can turn it around in the remainder of the season. Long way to go, of course, but things not going well. You can see that some of the supporters are not happy at all. They've gone towards the fans to applaud their support but uh, well this doesn't look good and you don't see it too often in J League as well I think the fans are su suggesting look you've got to fight a bit more you've got to do a little bit more we've come here to support our side you've not created enough there's disappointment on the squad and that's frustration and sadness as well certainly from the away support the home fans say they won't mind too much because their side have managed to pick up a, a key win. Let's get some reaction. Captain, 
そうですね本当にここ数試合ホームで勝ててなかったんでなんとかこの、えー、大勢のファミリーの前で勝利を届きたいという思いだけでした今日は京都戦以来のホームの勝利ですいかがですか、うん、本当に前節も、えー、満員に近いファミリーの方が来てくれて、えー、勝ち星につながらず